here we are for a special edition of Meaningful People. Uh, this is literally very last second after the uh, current events of that happened uh, yesterday. Uh, Nachi and I obviously were talking about it. Nachi, from your perspective, well, could you sum up from what you know what happened yesterday in New York? Um, I, you know, I think like everyone else, it was, it was a regular day until we got word of a young six-year-old missing in Brooklyn, um, which we, we come to know as Yosef Shapiro. And you never know how these things go, but a couple of hours later, these clips and videos start pouring out of dancing and singing and, you know... In the rain. In the rain and members of Chaverim holding Yosef Shapiro. So Baruch Hashem, very happy ending. And we have really now a, a rare opportunity to speak to somebody who's, who's a part of that happy ending. And we present to you Victor Shine. So Victor, could you tell us your role in this? We know it was a team effort, Hatsala, Shimron, the police, and, and so many organizations and people. But can you tell us from your perspective of what happened? Well, I have to back up because I don't think you know. You know, you start listing the organizations, but just the whole vibe of unity. Everyone was united with one goal. We got to find this boy. And it didn't matter which neighborhood, which nit, which shul, everybody was there. You couldn't get down the street because of the hundreds of cars. And you really have to be much of that before you start anything else. Lots of people came out in the rain. All right. But it was it was just the unity of all the different community organizations working together with the NYPD. And, and I don't even know all the organizations, but it was just a tremendous, tremendous effort. And I felt truly inspired to be part of it. Now, to take it from the top, I saw a message in my Marine Park neighborhood chat where I daven. Uh, they said they're looking for volunteers. And I don't know. I just. I didn't really understand what the scope was, what the story was. I thought it was a general call for more people to sign up for Shomrim or whatever. But um, I read it more closely and I realized that there's a boy missing. And it just occurred to me, like, I got to do something. So first I joined a Tehillim chat, you know, that's great stuff. I said, chapter 35. And then I got to thinking, you know, I really should be doing more personally. It's not like I'm in... Denver and can only say to him, I'm right here in Brooklyn. This place is maybe 20 minutes away from my house. Why don't I just go out there? It was still light. It wasn't raining yet. I asked my wife permission, of course. And uh, she, of course, enables me to do all the craziness, whatever I get myself into. Um, and you mentioned, I mean, it's a famous voice note going around. You mentioned like how if it was your grandchild, something along those lines. Yeah, that's right. So that's really what convinced me. You know, it would have been very easy to just, you know, pack it in, let everybody else do it. I know hundreds of people are there. What am I going to do? And then I thought about my grandson, Alexander, and, you know, he's six years old and, you know, he's a great kid and everybody loves him. And if everybody knew him, they would be out there searching. Don't even say it, as my wife said. But what if he were lost? What if he needed help? How could I not go? And suddenly this Yosef became my Yosef. He became my grandson. And what are you going to do? You know, you're not going to go to bed. You know, you're going to open up the safer and start learning. You're going to go to, you know, I don't know. So I cracked open my zombie apocalypse kit and brought out my flashlights and binoculars and the things that my kids make fun of. And I, I just went. I put out the text to my Shine family chat. Anybody want to go with me? whatever. I passed my shul about 10 minutes before we, are, we were scheduled for Mincha. And I said, you know, it's not really appropriate to stop at shul in Davin when this kid is out there lost. And, you know, we're searching for him. What are you doing? You, you know, you got to break routine. It was kind of hard for me. You know, I'm the guy there like 30 years. It's, it's my shul. It's where I go. And I had to make the decision. You know what? I'll, I'll figure it out. And as I was driving along Flatlands Avenue towards Pattergott, I realized I'm not going to make it in time. And I shouldn't halachically even pull over to say Mincha. So I was figuring out, should I like daven while I'm driving? And that's what I did. I actually daven, you know, I was in a bit of a traffic jam. And uh, <clears throat> I said, Ashray, I said, Shman Ashray. Anyways, skip that. I got to the uh, Pattergott and there was hundreds and hundreds of cars. You couldn't get down the street. 
So I took a different way and I got as close as I could, maybe five blocks away. I parked legally, unlike a lot, a lot of people who were parked everywhere because, you know, everyone was focused on getting out there and making it happen. I come to this intersection. It's like a curve where the road curves around the bay. I think it's East 76th Street and like Avenue N, Pattergat, whatever. And there's a couple of command centers. FSSP is there. I think Shomrim was there. So I report in, I walk right into the command center. What can I do? Where can I go? And they said, stand by, we're making up a grid and we're going to do this methodically. And, you know, we're going to do it the right way because they have training on how to search and rescue. Um, I'm trying to remember the acronym for uh, S I R circa or cars or something like that. They, uh, there, every every organization that you can think of, they were there, <laughs> except maybe the NSA. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so I didn't want to wait. I felt the tug. I felt the pull. I had to go. So I just let me just start walking. You know, they're not going to miss one guy from the grid search. But I stayed on the path. Um, I did one thing that I didn't see a lot of people doing. I was stopping strangers and showing them a picture on my cell phone. I say, if you see this boy, please call nine one one. You know, there were a lot of looky-loos wondering what's with all the religious men and a few women, you know, gathering here at uh, dusk. So, uh, you know, all the emergency vehicles and whatnot. Anyways, I'm walking. I'm calling out, Yosef, Yosef, we have pizza for you. Come out. Game's over. No more hide and seek or anything I could think of to try to entice a six-year-old. And I'm trying to think like a six-year-old. Where would I go? What would I do? I'm probably tired. I'm probably thirsty hungry, scared, I don't know, hadn't really started raining yet. I teamed up with another fellow who was, happened to be walking where I was. His name is uh, Dovey Fogel, I think from the Five Towns. And uh, we were just walking together, not to be alone as, as it got dark. And we crossed over underneath the Belt Parkway. It crosses over the Pattergat Bay, I think that's what it's called. And we're walking together along the sand. You see all these uh, crab shells and uh, clams or oyster shells i don't even know we're walking we're calling we're looking he's going up and down you know every hill i'm staying on the beach we didn't find anything we start to turn back we get back to the uh expressway overhead and i see a friend of mine from shoal avram saffron and he's about to head out there's a long bike path past the stables all the way to erskine street if you're familiar and uh I knew that was too much for me. And Shemar Snafshechem, you got to take care of yourself first. So I said, guys, you want to team up together and walk that way. I'm going to start heading back in the other direction, which means back to my car. And <clears throat> till then, aside from the beach, I hadn't really been off the paved road. And I saw a dirt path and I said, let me try one dirt path. I'll try one. I'm walking, I'm walking. I'm calling Yosef, Yosef. And then I hear a voice, just one word, ta, in a child's voice. And I think I'm hearing things because I said, is that you, Yosef, is that you? Nothing else, not another word. And I'm questioning, like, you know, maybe I didn't hear right. Maybe I, I don't know what to do. So I look behind me and about 20 feet behind me, there's another guy. I didn't get his name. He says, did you hear that too? I said, yeah, I heard it. Did you hear it? He says, yeah, I heard it. So he's a young strapping guy. He runs right into the marsh. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what he stepped into, but it was not cool. It was like, it is not a tamed area, let's say. And I figure, okay, I can be most helpful if I call this into my friend, Richie Taylor, who I had bet that my neighbor, Javi Horn, you know, we, we swapped numbers. We became friendly. We text each other. It's, he's a great guy. He's probably friends with a million people. He's the deputy inspector of the NYPD. But if you don't know that, he's just the most regular guy in the world. He's friendliest guy, hardworking, dedicated. I love Richie. Anyways, so I, I told him what I heard. He asked me to send the geolocation on WhatsApp. I actually had to find out how to do that because I'm not a millennial. <laughs> and um, he sent a couple of ATVs and a truck with a huge light. And uh, it took him about 15 minutes to get there. Remember, I had been walking for about an hour and a half, an hour and three quarters before I even found this place. It's a huge area, a huge park. And, um, you know, then immediately they wanted me to 
describe where was I, how was I, what did I hear, you know, when did I hear, and I told him exactly. Uh, also, when I finally did get through to Richie, because he didn't answer right away, he was a little busy. So I called him and I called him and I called him like a crazy person until he would answer. And finally, he answered, thank God. He says, who are you with? Because I guess you had to be with somebody with a radio. And I wasn't with anybody. I was just by myself and the Marsh guy. And right then, this guy, RL44 from Rockaway Lawrence, uh, Hatsala, Rafi, uh, he was walking by right then. His radio's going off. I said, hi, what's your name? I said, I'm with Rafi. <laughs> so I gave the phone to Rafi and he gave the, you know, the information, the coordinates, and he stayed with me until, you know, there were crews looking and, and whatnot. So I'm like, they don't need me now. <laughs> I've done all I can. So I'm gonna go home. So I decided to uh, start walking back. I didn't get more than two minutes out. I come to a, a group of guys and they're like, is that singing? Is that like, what's going on? Did they find him? So I run back to Rafi. I said, Rafi, what's going on? Because he has the radio. And Rafi says, they found him. I said, is he okay? He says, I don't know. So then I start going back towards the uh, command center, which is right on this East 76 and Avenue N, I don't know. And they were just bringing him out of the woods right then and loading him onto an ambulance. And I just, I lost it. I mean, we were all out here. And it could have ended so differently. Everybody knows this is the 10th anniversary last month of, of Levi Kletsky, Alva Shalom. I was there when the, when the uh, deputy chief was instructing people to go door to door, check refrigerators, check freezers, check car trunks. You know, this could have been anything. We don't know. He wasn't, you know, lost. Maybe he was taken. Nobody knows. They, they weren't sparing any expense or any effort. And to find him doing well, a little shell-shocked. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how he is. I just saw a picture of him in the hospital. I mean, thank God they didn't have him in the middle of the circle where we were dancing in the rain, but <laughs> I didn't care about the rain. I was getting drenched. I mean, the dollar bills in my wallet are unusable. I mean, it's that crazy. Uh, everything I was wearing head to toe. My tits is probably have to go right in Seamus. And they were brand new for the wedding I made last month. You know, my oh, baby got married. You know, somebody asked me, why do you think you were Zoka to be the one? So I said, first of all, I'm not the one. <laughs> but Okay, I had a role. Richie called me later and told me, like, Victor, if it wasn't for your tip, I don't know. This was the major break in the case. You did it. And he called me again this morning and he told me, you were it. You know, make no mistake, this was you. And I, I'm like, yeah, me and a cast of thousands, right? Cast of hundreds. No, no, your tip is what, right at the time when everything was turning, the sky had gotten dark. The rain was coming down in buckets. The scent was gone. We were really losing hope. And then your tip came in and I sent my teams and, and we found him right then. So back to uh, what I think made me Zoha is because when I married off my baby, I had a little more time on my hands, you know, empty nesters and all. And I got involved in Shiduchim. I mean, I've always had my ears open, but now I have a spreadsheet. And I started with five names and now I have over 30 and people heard of me and I'm getting calls from uh, Antwerp and Jerusalem and Nice, France, as well as New York, New Jersey, Florida, Baltimore. And people haven't had dates in months. And my message is you don't have to be the guy to be the guy. You just step up. And specifically with respect to Shidduchim, we just had Tuba Av was Shabbos Nachamu, you know, how much more of a simen do you need than that? It doesn't take much. L'shadei Chabanos on Shabbos, get together with your friends, get into a WhatsApp group. I have a WhatsApp group. There's over 200 people in it. It's not my group. And all we do is upload resumes and pictures sometimes and say, what about him for her or her for him or whatnot? And that's the banter. And I, I believe we've made some matches. Even some 60-year-olds got matched up that way. Talk to your friends. Everybody hearing my voice knows five singles right away. You know five singles. Nachi, you know, probably 50 singles. <laughs> you know, I spoke to a guy. He made 14 shidduchim himself. He has a daughter. You know, he doesn't, you know, everybody needs. And I'm not the greatest shadchan in the world, but I can make a match. I can, you know, dispense with the rules. You got to ask the guy first and find out. Send the resumes to her. If I, do whatever you have to do. You feel awkward. You feel like it's not your thing. Say to him. 
they have school is for singles now it's a brand new thing they're <clears throat> you're learning once a day a couple of things from Shmir Salashon, specifically in the merit of singles they have 10k Bata Yisrael which I'm sure you know you're in Hempstead the Hassan and Kala who were killed tragically right before they were married and now there's been 15 suggestions for matches 175 people got married or engaged at least because of this initiative there's a brand new one called strike the match it's an app that you haven't heard of yet because it's not out yet um his name is ellie klein i was actually just speaking to him before he called and he's going to have <clears throat> people's information on an app on your cell phone so you just keep them handy you keep them in mind and resumes that i took in years and years ago i'm following up with did you ever get married? Are you dating? Are you whatnot? Anyways, the focus, the point is, is the unity of this story and the fact that every single person in Kali Yisrael can make a difference. And my vote is to make that difference with Shiduchim. It's a, it's I love really, that. It's really amazing. And, and um, what you're saying is so, is so special because if you take what you said about Shiduchim, now anyone can really step up and do it. If you think about it, Last night, had you just gone home and went to sleep thinking, you know what, I'm, I'm not the search and rescue guy. I'm not a bear. I'm not at Salah. You know, we don't even want to think what could have happened, but, you know, you, you, you didn't. You know, you went out there when, let's say, you maybe weren't the most qualified, and Hashem chose you. Victor, would, would you feel comfortable? It's up to you. I mean, we have a bit of an audience. Would you want to share your email in terms of Shaduchim that people could go to you? Is that something you'd want to do? Sure. Um, What's an email address that someone can reach you at, I guess, for... Honestly, the best way is my WhatsApp is 718-986-6752. Plus one for America, of course. Uh, my email is vjshine at gmail.com, like Victor Joel Shine at gmail.com. Okay. And do you want, I, I do think there's going to be some people, maybe a lot of people watching and listening to this that will personally want to thank you for finding little Yosef, is that something that you'd want them to do or you prefer that they just reach out in terms of Shadduchim? Because I mean, you just gave out your number I, to a bunch of people. I, I love people. Okay. You know, I'm one guy, you know, and understand I'm just, I'm, I'm really just one guy. I've been the Gabbai in my show forever. It's my little, you know, place. My father, all of a sudden told me, find a place to daven and daven there. So if it's raining, I'm a foul weather friend to another show that's a little closer. But otherwise, that's my show. I I, you know, I just, I love people. Forgive me if I don't get back to you right away. I still work for a living. Um, I just, I'm inspired by people and I like to inspire people. Um, when I wrote my song back when I was 17, it was all about unity. It was about a guy who's just traveling through the sticks and just, you know, finds a place. I want to, I want to end off with that because, um, you know, when I, I, we put out, I put on my status, like trying to find who is this guy that sent out that voice note, the five minute voice note. And a bunch of people said your name and they mentioned, oh, he also wrote Minion Man. Yeah. Uh, famous song by Schlockrock. You wrote that song. Is that, that's correct, I did. right? I did. And I get the chills. Maybe you'll give us permission to play it maybe at the end of this. Um, I get chills because I was looking at the lyrics and I'm going to read some of it. I mean, you wrote it so you can tell it better to me, but look at these lyrics and see how ironic this is. I walked around the town wondering what to do because Shabbos is no time to be feeling blue. And then I saw a man who looked the same way too. I was quite relieved to find a fellow Jew. It's, it's, I, you wrote this song, I don't know, like more than 30 I, years ago. It was 1982. I was 17. You're that guy. You're the one in the song. You're the one who found a fellow Jew. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't even think of that. There you go. I'm getting tears thinking That's about this. That's a good hop. And, if, you, uh, if you do attach it, look for the YouTube that says original Minion Man. Okay. That's the way I originally recorded it and sent it to Lenny. It's a ballad. It's not, no, there's no chorus. I played the guitar and the violin and sang using two Radio Shack cassette recorders. It was very low tech at the time. <laughs> and Lenny's really deserves all the credit for making it famous. The Maka Beats too, because they re-recorded And Gershon Varoba and all the other people who were involved. But um, it's just, the, the song has legs. It's strikes a chord. And I think it's the same chord of this story. It's about unity. It's about how much we can accomplish if we all come together. If we just love each other and drop the drama and just be there for each other for whatever it is. And okay, they're not my community. He's not in my schnitt. I wouldn't bury his daughter. I don't know. 
whatever it is, we're all Jewish together. I got lots of friends who are not Shomer Shabbos. These are my people. These are my friends. You know, it's not going to change how I feel about them. This is the Orthodox community, you know? Ah, nice. this, <laughs> I was wondering, this is us. This is who we are, right? Th this is who we are. And and I love what Nachi is doing. I'm, I'm very inspired. I don't listen every day, <laughs> but I just, I, I love what you're doing. And I'm, I'm so proud of you for starting it and for continuing it. And it's just, it's a tremendous, tremendous thing. Everybody just needs a little spark of inspiration in their lives. Me too. And uh, it, it's- Thank, it, thank you, really. It's thank a real, you so much. It, it's a real opportunity. It's such as Chus, and I'm so grateful to, to know the people I do and to, to be with the people I do and to do good things with the people. Well, thank you so much, Victor, taking your time. Uh, you know, it's easy for us to say that you're a hero and uh, I also want to reiterate what you said. All the people that w just went out there, we, we know, we, I, we each personally know hundreds of people that went out that maybe didn't actually find, but it's, it's through everyone's help that, you know, little Yosef was found. And like you said, it's with everyone's help that we could just make more Shadduchim and just make more beautiful things in Kali Yisrael. What about the thousands of people who were just davening? They were saying, there were Tehillim groups that sprouted up immediately, mm -hmm. you know? There were people in Denver or wherever who were just davening. You know, don't exactly. discount that. Which that's that's those, part of the whole thing. Those groups should continue. They should continue for, for Shaduchim. They should right. definitely continue for Shaduchim and they should get involved in Shaduchim. That's my thing now. For all those uh, watching, listening, this is Victor Shine. Hi. <laughs> the song is titled Men and Men. And uh, it's November 11th, 1986. The song is written. 1982, and here's my best rendition. All right, let's go. I stepped off the bus in Mobile, Alabama. The sun was slowly setting. Six o'clock on a summer Friday afternoon, Shabbos was an hour away. I walked around the town wondering what to do, but Shabbos is no time to be feeling blue. And then I saw a man who looked the same way too. I was quite relieved to find a fellow Jew. Asked the man I saw how many Jews in this town. He said to me, There used to be a minion around, but one of us passed away and we've been feeling down. Yet now it seems as though another Jew has been found. Won't you stay with us for Shabbos, minion man? Some moved on, but the back of the 
store still remembers the song The nine men who waited, the one came along How Shabbos was carried on a song Let's see how I did.